Hi Sparkies, Miss Joy here, and I'm very excited to bring you another lesson from God's Word tonight. Before we begin, let's close our eyes and bow our heads and pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for this night at Sparks. I pray that you would give us good listening ears as we learn another lesson from your Word. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, tonight, Sparkies, we're going to be learning a very big verse from the book of 2 Timothy. Before we begin, I want to ask you a question. Have you ever tried to walk across a room with the lights off? It's completely dark. Have you ever tried to like walk across a room when it's completely dark? It is not easy, is it? You could trip over some toys. You could stub your toe on a chair. You could run into a table. There's many things you could do. It's very difficult, but as soon as you turn that light on, Oh, no problem. Super easy to do. You can see everywhere. You can see exactly where you're going. Did you know that the God's Word, the Bible, tells us that we live in darkness? Now, that doesn't mean that we live in a dark room with the lights off. It means that we can't see what is right or wrong unless we look at what God tells us in the Bible. There is a verse that explains this, this a bit. It is Psalm 119, verse 105. And it says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. That's right. This verse tells us that God's word is a light. It's a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Just like a flashlight can be used to light a dark path when you're walking outside, God's word is the same way and it leads us through life. It's a lamp to our feet. It shows us where we're going and how we're living. A long time ago, there was a man named Timothy. Long time ago, like way long time ago, back in Bible times. Now, Timothy, when he was a young boy, was taught by his mother and his grandmother lots of verses from the Old Testament. He may have even learned some of the verses we know, like Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Who knows? But he learned lots of Old Testament verses from his mom and his grandmother. And he listened. He listened to what they taught him, and he listened to what God was saying in those verses. He did the things that he learned about the verses that he memorized. So he learned, he heard the verse, he learned it, he memorized it, and he did it. Now, one day when Timothy was a young man, the apostle Paul came to visit. And he came to visit a town called Lystra. That is where Timothy lived. Many people told Paul about Timothy and that he was a fine young man and that he really tried to do the things that God wanted him to do. Paul decided that Timothy would be a good person to take along as a helper as he went from town to town teaching the people about Jesus. So Timothy went with Paul. Paul often told Timothy to not forget the things that his mother and his grandmother had taught him about God. Paul wrote Timothy two letters that we can read today. Where do you think those two letters are found? That's right. 1 Timothy and 2 Timothy. Those are books of the Bible. We know those. The letters <coughs> that Paul wrote to Timothy are not just for Timothy. They're for us today. That's why they're in the Bible, so we can read them too. One of the reasons that Paul wrote these letters to Timothy was... <coughs> to tell Timothy the reasons that God gave us the Bible. That's one of the things he wrote in one of the letters to Timothy, was the reason that God gave us the Bible. He wrote it in Timothy's second letter, 2 Timothy 3, 16. This is a huge verse that we're gonna work on today, and it has a lot of big words, but this is where that verse came from. It is a verse that Paul wrote to Timothy in a letter and we have it in the Bible today so that we can learn from it too. In this verse, there are the four reasons that God gave us the Bible. So let's read it together. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable 
for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. And that's in 2 Timothy 3.16. Now, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. That means God gave it to men to write down. And it is profitable. Profitable means it's good. It's good for something. And this is what it's good for. And these words that are underlined are the big words that we're going to learn today. The first word is the word doctrine. Now, I bet many of us have not heard that word. It's kind of a big word. Preachers and pastors probably use that word a lot. Well, that word simply means teaching. That's right. Doctrine means teaching. Anything we read in the Bible is doctrine. God is teaching us. So when it says that the Bible is good for doctrine, it is good for teaching. So we're going to pretend with something today. I have something that's very sharp. I have a knife. Now, let's pretend that your mom says, I am going to, my knives are on the kitchen counter and I do not want you to touch the knives. She's going to give you a teaching about the knife and the teaching is knives can be good for things like cutting food. Knives can also be dangerous. You can get cut by touching a knife. So do not touch the knife. So that is her teaching. She's teaching us about knives and she's telling us what to do. She's telling us do not touch the knife. Okay, so the Bible teaches us. It's good for teaching. Okay, so that's the first one. The second word we have is reproof. Another big word, reproof. <coughs> reproof means to tell you what you are doing is wrong. So let's imagine that you touched one of the knives on the counter. Even though your mama told you not to, you touched the knife and she knows it. She would say, I am your mom. I am in charge of you and I told you not to touch the knife, but you went ahead and you did it anyhow. The Bible says that you are to obey your parents and you did not do that. What you did was wrong. That would be called a reproof. She's telling you that what you did was wrong. That's exactly what the Bible does. God wants us to know when we've done wrong. So he talks to us through the Bible and tells us when we are wrong. He tells us not to disobey our parents. He tells us not to um, whine, grumble, or complain. He tells us um, not to lie. Those are the things that God tells us in the Bible. So the Bible teaches us and the Bible tells us when we're doing something wrong. So let's look at this third one here. The Bible is good for correction. The, not only does the Bible tell us when we're doing something wrong, but it also tells us when, it also tells us the right way to do something, okay? So um, you're, let's go back to the knife and pretend that, remember, you had touched it. So your mom says, you should have stayed away from that knife and not touched it. I told you that if you touched it, you might get hurt. A knife can be dangerous. Stay away from the knife. So not only does she tell you not to touch it, which is you, we disobeyed, so we had a reproof there, but now she's giving us a correction and telling us that the right thing to do would be to stay away from the knife. Okay, so she's giving us a correction there. She's telling us stay away from the knife. That's what the Bible does too. The Bible tells us not to disobey, but then it gives us a correction and tells us to obey. Children, obey your parents. So it gives us the correction, the right thing to do. The Bible tells us we are to rejoice. Instead of whine, grumble, and complain, we're to rejoice. The Bible tells us to be honest. Instead of lying, the Bible tells us to be honest. So the Bible is good for teaching us doctrine, the Bible is good for reproof or telling us when we're doing something wrong. The Bible is good for correction, telling us when we're doing something right. 
The last one is this really long one for instruction in righteousness. Instruction in righteousness. Righteousness is goodness. The Bible not only tells us what is right, the Bible tells us how to keep on doing right. It, 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 it instructs, instructs us in righteousness. It tells us how to keep doing the good things that we're supposed to be doing. That's a good thing. So going back to the knife, your mom might say, the next time that you see the knife and you know they're on the counter, you should walk around it. You should walk away from it. You shouldn't walk near it so that you're not tempted to touch it. Walk far away from it. Remove yourself, scooch back so that you aren't tempted to touch the knife. The Bible tells us to think about things that are good. Your mom gave you some good ideas. Scoot back. Stay away from it. Walk around it. Walk away from it. She gave you some good ideas and instructs you in the right way to do things. That's what the Bible does. It tells us to think about things that are good. The Bible tells us to also stay away from things that make us think about doing wrong. So it tells us to stay away from situations where you might be tempted to think about doing something wrong. Okay, even thinking about it tells us just stay away from it and think about things that are good. So the Bible teaches us. The Bible tells us when we're doing something wrong. The Bible tells us when we're doing something right and it tells us to keep on doing right and good things. But how does it tell us to do all of that stuff? That's one verse with a lot of big words. How does that actually work? Well, the Bible doesn't always use the exact words for every situation that we're in. God tells us what is right and what is wrong. If there's something you want to do and you're not sure whether it's right or wrong, you can ask a parent or a leader to help you find where God talks about it in the Bible. So he's not necessarily going to use exact words like don't pull your sister's hair or um, don't mess with your brother's things. Those words are probably not going to be in the Bible. But words that will be in the Bible will be children obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. Now your mom and dad or grandma and grandpa, somebody has probably told you don't pull your sister's hair. Or they've probably told you don't mess with your brother's things. So you have already received instruction on what to do that is right. You already know children obey your parents, okay? So you can use that to know what to do in those situations. Okay, mom already told me I shouldn't pull my sister's hair. I know what it, the right thing is to do. The Bible also gives us another verse in Ephesians that says to be kind to one another. We already have that verse. We know what the right thing is to do. So if we have a situation where we're pulling your sister's hair or picking on her or bugging her or you're messing with your brother's things, you already know the right thing to do. Be kind to one another. So even though those exact words aren't necessarily going to be in the Bible, we still know that the Bible is giving us instructions on the right way to do things. It's teaching us, telling us when we're doing wrong, telling us when we're doing right, and telling us how to keep on doing the right and good things we're supposed to do. So let's end by praying and asking Jesus to help us with all of this. Because doing the right thing is sometimes really hard. So close your eyes, bow your heads. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for this night with all these sparks. Sometimes doing the right thing is really hard, Jesus, and we need your help. Please help us as we... Um, go through this week and the choices that we have to make that we would do the right thing. Your word helps us and we know that we have instructions from you on what to do. In Jesus name, amen. All right, Sparkies, I will see you next week. Bye.